we've explored the main method. We're going to briefly look at draw table, but draw table uh, is complete. It's just that draw row doesn't do what it should be doing. So all draw table does, it just calls draw row. It's going to use whatever max value got sent in, and it's going to draw that many rows. Uh, it's going to send in I is the row number, and max value is the uh, number of elements in that row, or number of numbers in that row. Um, I don't actually call draw table because it's not my row does not uh, work properly now. So all I'm going to do is call draw row with one and max value. And what does draw row do? It draws a line. It draws three strings and draws another line. Uh, we'll comment out these strings. And just go ahead and run this. Uh, so it's just going to draw two lines. I want to put my numbers in between these two lines. And again, if you need more than three seconds, go ahead, change that. All right, so this draws an upper line and a lower line. And now I'm going to let it draw the strings here. Now, it's very tempting to tell it, uh, now when I draw a string, it always goes string first, and then an X and a Y position. And the way we actually have to use this, I can't just send a number in for the first uh, parameter. Now, it may be hard to see, but it's draw string. Uh, there's no method draw string int int. I can't move the mouse over it, but uh, where it says int int int, uh, the method uh, graphics draw string where it goes string int int is not applicable, but that is the one that I would like to be using. So the way we do it, there's a few ways to do it. You could quote one, this would work just fine. Uh, what I did is I went and created a method called pad, which will pad it with extra zero, uh, not zeros, extra spaces, because some of my numbers are going to be one digit, some of my numbers are going to be two digits, and some of my numbers actually could be three digits. If I build a bigger multiplication table, they might be four, five, six digits. So what I did, this method takes in a number and returns a string, and if the number is small, less than 10, meaning one digit, it adds two blank spaces. If the number is less than 100, which means uh, it's two digits, then I add one blank. And if it's 100 or more, it already has three digits. So all I do is I convert it to a string by adding the empty string to a number. And if this if statement is true, it's going to return and it won't execute anything below. So that's why I don't need to put an else if, else if, the return takes care of that. So that's the pad method, and that's how I can call draw string, because I'm actually sending it a string now. This converted the number one into a string. All right, so this prints out some numbers. You could duplicate this and go with five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and then we have the X and the Y. Uh, this is not a very efficient way to do this, so I'm not actually gonna duplicate those. We need to see the pattern happening here. So it should be pretty clear the pattern happening here. This is the X coordinate, which moves further to the right each time you draw a new number. So it starts 25, 50, 75, 100. You should be able to see the pattern here. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of math. And there we go. All right. Now, one one. I didn't change the actual value overall, I just wrote it in a way uh, that's going to make this much easier to loop. The Y coordinate doesn't change because when you look at the printed version, they're not, uh, the Y value or the vertical alignment is all the same right there. All right, so we're ready to put this in a loop. So you could start i at zero, but if you look, the first value I use is one here, 
what I'm thinking about is this number right here. So we're gonna go I less than, now how many numbers do I want? I wanna use this size. Uh, I'll probably need less than or equal to, because I think I set it to 10. And then increment I. All right, I'm gonna grab one of these and bring it in. And all I'm gonna do is go I, I, like this. And let's go ahead, comment that out, and then run it. And there we go. All right, so that prints out the numbers I need. And then draw the final line. Now what I also have to do is print all the vertical lines in between the numbers. Uh, and that is a little bit tricky. So before we do that, let's think about height and width up here. So I'm gonna uncomment those so I can use height and width. Now, if you look, width is 25. That actually is this amount right here. And again, I can use width because it's a field. I declared it outside of all the methods. So I can use it anywhere inside the class. Uh, I can access width. Uh, I'm not gonna change width and height. Uh, height is a height of one row. And that'll be right here. Height, all right. Now, if you look here, when I run this, there's an, I, I just moved it over one width amount right here, which is 25. So I'm gonna replace that with width. Uh, now this 300 is gonna change and it's gonna change depending on size. I'm not gonna help you change that. Uh, 300 appears again down here on the bottom line. Uh, let's look at the top draw line and the bottom draw line. What's the difference? Well, we already put the 25 into width. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have x1, y1. Now notice the y1 is bigger. It's bigger by 16 which happens to be the height. Uh, the 300, you're gonna have to figure out what to do with that, but that'll be height also. Hit play, there we go. Now you might think, ah, nothing changed. Well, visually nothing changed. That's because the value of width is 16. And the reason I did three plus height, uh, if I undo this a couple times, I could have put 19 here and 19. However, the reason I left it as three plus 16 is because well, where it came from is I duplicated this draw line and all I did was I modified the, the Y value of three and the other Y value of three and I shifted them 16 down uh, because at least for me, that was kind of the intuitive way to do it. Uh, and now you can see because I shifted it 16, that's the value of height. And now we can go ahead and run this. It should obviously look the same. Um, if I don't do the plus three, what happens is your line will be askew because the right Y value is not big enough. It's three pixels too high. So we're gonna go three plus. This little three is the offset right here, the vertical offset that we needed. All right, we don't need to draw these others. Okay, so we have the first row drawn, except you need to draw the vertical lines. Now I wanna warn you, when you do this, uh, there's one more vertical line than number because they start on the outside and end on the outside. Also, my line is too long. Uh, let's take out, I wanna close the window when I'm ready to close the window. You can use the cursor and it's a little hard to see in the recording, but it tells you in the lower left corner, it tells you the coordinates. It tells you the current zoom also, but it tells you the coordinates where your mouse is. So in the upper left corner, we're 25, three. Lower left corner, 25, 18 or 19. Now I went too far after the 10. These lines are too long. So I probably wanna stop at 269, 270. But think about the width. How can we use the width 
we're going 10 over, but 10 widths. So you need to draw vertical lines in between. So the vertical lines will be your job. Uh, I am going to talk about how to do a second row. So I'm duplicating, control, shift, down. I'm going to call draw row with two, max value. Oh no, nothing changed. Well, let's look at draw row. So draw row. Now if you look, there's no reference to the row variable. Uh, there is a reference to size right here. Now, I mentioned this before, 300 will depend on size also. So keep that in mind. But I didn't actually use the row variable. All right, what is row going to do? Well, when I print the first row, the second row will be below it. So it needs to increase all the Y coordinates. So let's look and see where there's a Y coordinate. There's uh, an X and here's a Y. So I'll just go plus row, plus row. Uh, I'm not going to change the draw string. That'll be uh, your job to do that. But I'm going to do the plus row here and here. And now run it. Oh no, what happened here? Well, the lines became twice as thick. But what actually happened is there's a second line drawn on top, uh, right underneath the first line because we added row, which for us, I believe, was the number two. Yeah, right there. So the first one added a one, the second one added a two when it printed out. All right, what we want to do instead, it's row times height because that's how much we want to go down each time. run it. Oh, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. All right, where did I mess up? X, here's the Y. Oh, man, it's getting complicated. Oh, height times height. That's definitely don't want a square height. Maybe this will work. Getting warmer. That's where the multiplication should be. Okay. Now we'll run it. All right. Getting better, except we don't have anything for the first row anymore. That's strange. We got different row values, but it's coming out the same. Draw row. I'm clicking this to make sure it's actually calling the method I think it is, um, and it is. So first time it sends a one and then a two. Oh, geez. So this is hard to see what the problem was. If you look, I commented out, we got the exact same thing. Uh, now, my problem is this line, I believe, is exactly well, it's almost exactly as this line is. Um, all right, so I totally screwed up the second line. Let's just start over. Now, this is the same exact thing, but what I want to do is add one to the row. The parentheses are important, so this takes one more, row plus one, or one more than the row, and multiplies by the height. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And this three is our original offset. If we don't have that, well, I'll take that out in a second, you'll see. All right, so we're almost there, except I totally screwed up the first line. Row. I think this one actually should be a minus one. And the other one should not have a plus or minus. Still going to keep that plus. I'm just going to add zero, which does nothing. All right, look at that. Okay. And if you want to test this out, you can do, I really recommend don't do two at a time. Uh, if you don't know if it works or not, you really should just do one at a time and you can see what's happening. And that's if I did row two, duplicate it with row three, comment, run. There we go. 
So now a couple of them are working. Let's go ahead and run all three in a row and you'll see one, two, three. Now, obviously the print, uh, printing numbers is not working because I did not touch their Y value. So it's printing them right on top of each other. That's why it looks like there's only one row of numbers is because they're all on top of each other. Okay. So you're getting there. This is drawing the horizontals. You're going to have to come back and draw the verticals on each row. And of course, what do you need to do to modify draw a string? You need to, the X coordinates fine. It's the Y coordinate you need to modify. So you need to modify height and you're going to do that. You don't want to use I because remember this I is going column by column. Because it's going column by column, I think it might be a good move to rename this. Highlight F2, Shift F2, Control R for rename. There we go. I'm going to call it column uh, because it's acting like the column. 